So nice to see you, Alyssa. How, how are you? Um, not great, to be honest. No, not great. Why? What's, uh, tell me about what is well, not so great. I, uh, I don't know. I really tried to like slow down on the drinking and everything. And I just, I'm not doing too well. I, I, I don't know. This week I, I saw this show and it just reminded me of my ex-husband and everything that he put me through and like cheating and Mm -hmm. Um, and then all the thoughts started coming back, you know, is Mike doing this too? Um, and I, I know he's not, I know, like, I know he's not, he's so nice to me, but I just, yeah. I feel like I just don't trust anybody anymore. Yeah. Um, I like, he shows me his text. He, he, I can see right. he leaves his phone unlocked all the time. I mean, um. I know his passcode. I know he's not hiding anything. Yeah. But I still am like so paranoid. I feel like I'm going crazy. Yeah. And um. And so then you know every day I get home and open that yeah. bottle and and keep drinking and and then it's gotten to a point now where I'm like hiding bottles under the trash can outside okay, you yeah. know so he doesn't see how many I'm drinking and. Uh -huh. I don't even feel like I'm getting drunk anymore. I mean, yeah. I guess I am because I'm sort of passing out. Um, okay. I mean, at least I'm not like an angry drunk. I just like kind of get tired. Yeah. Okay, um, that's, that's a good thing. But it's too much. I feel like shit every yeah. morning when I wake up. I'm tired. My body hurts. So it's I'm trying, you know, I want to exercise and feel good, but like I, ha I don't have any energy. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of thoughts going on yeah. there about what's happening. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it sounds like you're still having some anxiety, and it's, you know, causing you to you know, continue the drinking. Um, yeah, like what's wrong with me? Fix yeah. my brain. Yeah, I don't so know how to. We're gonna we're gonna work on it. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, say I, I, we talk about anxiety and about drinking. Uh, which you know, which of those two are you more? Concerned about working on if there was one that. You well, I mean, the drinking I think is the priority because. I mean, I don't think I'm an alcoholic, but like yeah. my behavior right now sure screams alcoholic. Yeah. Um, I think I've just gotten into this horrible cycle and I want to get out of it. And every day I'm like, I'm not going to drink today or I'm only going to drink one and yeah. it turns into four and it just. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I mean, the, the drinking does sound like, uh, you know, something that's causing you some problems and um, I'd like to work on. <clears throat> you know, trying to reframe the thoughts. Yeah, that and I feel like I think because I'm feel like such shit from the drinking that I'm in a fog anyway. Yeah. yeah. And so that just makes my level of anxiety and and depression or whatever. I don't know. I just yeah. it's like right. all. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a li in a, just a few minutes okay. here about how you know your thoughts influence behaviors and then your actions and ultimately the drinking and leading yeah. to consequences you don't want. Um, so uh, just to kind of recap from our last session, um, you know, we talked about how, you know, you wanted to reduce your drinks from four to two. Um, and then we talked about some other coping uh, mechanisms that, you know, you could put in place to kind of help you distract from drinking yeah and I was doing okay actually which and what were you I, w I had I had um so I was I put those sticky notes around you know and I was actually um so I would <laughs> when I would get home I would pour myself two glasses of wine uh -huh. two separate ones you know what I mean and like yeah. ha measure out like what I was going to drink that night and nothing more and then and I would put the bottle away for the next night um uh, and like I said, that was that was kind of working until I saw that show, yeah. and it just brought everything back. And then yeah. that night, like I popped open the bottle again, and like I don't even know how many I had after. Yeah, that. So I want to go back to this show. That um, is this. So this show is a trigger. Oh, it's or one or of those is... stupid reality shows where mm -hmm. they have like um, they catch people cheating. I don't even know the name oh, of the movie. It's yeah. called Cheaters. I don't know. I don't know why I was watching it. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. And like I need to, uh, it, it was like a train wreck, and I couldn't 
stop watching. Was um, it your first the first time you saw it? Was, it yeah, I was just flipping through channels and I saw the title. I was like cheaters, yeah. and I started watching it. And okay. Yeah. So we're gonna make a no no yeah, cheater no, TV show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, just we wanna maybe avoid those. But I wanna check in with you about uh, last time we talked about journaling is um, a coping skill. You're gonna try and journal about your feelings and and about your drinking um, yeah did you give I, that a try no, at all not really no I, no okay i will i promise yeah. i will i will do anything <laughs> at this point because i just feel i'm desperate to break mm-hmm. this cycle yeah sorry no that's okay uh that's why we we went but over I, I did the breathing and that worked and the yeah so and the sticky notes that was working yeah um this, and then you said it, it was working and then it wasn't working the sticky notes that, yeah because that show because that so stupid show it just got in my trouble. head yeah okay and then um we talked about um the elliptical machine do you remember oh that? yeah no i do that so i i do that um but i i mean i it's hard just starting it like once i do it i feel better but but right now because i wake up and i feel so crappy in the morning i mean you know most of my clients are in the afternoon or evening so it's not like I have to get up early but I used to like get up and I would exercise and have yeah. you know my routine in the morning and now I wake up and I just don't feel great and so very rarely do I actually exercise um, I know that I would feel better if I did yeah yeah um, definitely so yeah we'll, we'll talk about some building uh, some new habits here okay. um, that's another thing I want to kind of over with you in a little bit um i want to check in on a couple other things uh one of those being uh mike how is mike um how is he with this whole situation i don't think he really knows i i really haven't told him like that i'm worried about him like i mean you know when we were dating and everything i mean he knew about what happened with my first husband and I mean hell he got cheated on by his first wife and so he he's not I know he would never do that I know he wouldn't Mm -hmm. I know deep down that he would never cheat on me yeah um and I know that like what me thinking he will is irrational but um I don't know why I worry so much about it but I haven't really told him about it and then Mm -hmm. I've been hiding like how much I'm drinking because like we'll yeah. drink together or he'll have a beer when he gets home yeah. um and he thinks I'm having like my first or second glass of wine but it's yeah pretty far in by then so that's what I, I wanted to you know go back to um you know the drinking and uh you know how what, what are Mike's um what are his th- thoughts yeah on? he doesn't know how much I'm drinking yeah so he, he doesn't realize because I'm hiding it from him and I think when I started hiding it that's when I realized I needed uh-huh. to come here and get some help because yeah. I've, like, what, this, I've never been like this in my whole life. Yeah, what is it, if you were to have a conversation about Mike and kind of, uh, you know, open up to uh, him about your drinking and about hiding um, the alcohol and about kind of pre I think he would be super concerned. I think he'd be so worried about me that he would probably like, freak out and uh-huh. um, or, or want me to go to rehab or... I don't know. I don't know. I just don't want to. I don't want to worry him. I don't want to do that to yeah. him. I want to like get this under control, um, and then and then talk to him about it. Okay. So. I want to yeah. I want to put it behind me and because yeah. I, I don't want him to feel like he in any way yeah. caused this. I know this is my doing. Well, let me let me ask you something about that. So you say you guys did sit down. You had a conversation about your drinking. And uh, you told them that you were kind of hiding alcohol, um, you know, that you were drinking more than he knew about. And then, like you just said a minute ago, that he, you think he would freak out. Well, I think he'd be hurt. Yeah. So what happens if he did find these things out and he did freak out or he was hurt? What would happen then? Um, I mean, he would want to help me. I mm-hmm. think we would be okay. I mean, yeah. honestly, I think, um, <laughs> I mean, probably telling him would, geez, probably telling him would help me get through this because he would probably help me and I didn't really 
really think about that until this moment. But yeah, yeah, he would probably like be able to be my coach and mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't think I'm just embarrassed, uh -huh. you know. And, I, and that's a, I I feel like that's a pretty normal, uh, you know, react or feeling that you know you breaking kind of or you're you're letting him in on your little secret. Yeah. Um, but then again, he's your husband and. Um, you know, I think he kind of would be, I think he'd be, you know, helpful if he knew these things. Oh, no, I think he would too. Yeah. I think he would too. I just, I, I'm embarrassed. I feel like a failure somehow. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm letting him down. I'm letting myself down. I'm letting my kids down. Yeah. I mean, when I'm getting them ready for school in the morning, I'm like a zombie. Yeah. You know? Uh-huh. Um, no, but you're right. I mean, what, like... I need to be open and honest with him because otherwise, like, what's our relationship based on? Yeah. If, if I mean, he yeah. has every reason not to trust me if I continue to lie to him, and that's as bad as cheating, right? I mean, I'm basically being dishonest. And well, uh, I mean, it, it's definitely something that I think you should think about. Maybe um, a conversation with him about it yeah. could be helpful and make. Yeah. Make Maybe I can better. just sort of ease into, like, um, yeah, maybe, I, you know, hey, honey, I'm, I feel like I'm, I need to cut back on the alcohol, will you help me, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and then you just kind of spoke about, um, you know, kind of feeling like a failure in front of your kids, uh, or letting them down, letting yourself down. I mean, what, uh, what would change though you know how do you think you could be a good a good role model for them or uh, well, what are some I mean, things that if, could if i could get this under control and stop drinking i mean i used to be just a social drinker one or two glasses mm -hmm. night if here and there and now it's every night and not, and so i feel like you know I need to to be present and I feel like I'm, I'm like I said I'm in a fog all yeah, the time yeah. and so I'm not present for them and when I, I, I and I'm probably irritable yeah unless you know I don't know I mean I'm not like biting their heads off or anything like yeah. that it's just I feel like I'm in a fog and so maybe I'm missing out on stuff that yeah yeah okay. I don't well know. I'm gonna help you uh, try and okay. not miss anything and bring you out of that fog um, couple other quick check-in items um, were sleep. I know you were having a little bit of difficulty with yeah. that last time we spoke. Yeah. Can you tell me, tell me a I'm little bit I'm falling asleep that? okay because of the alcohol, I think, but I, I tend to wake up at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, but I've been able to go back to sleep for the most part, so I get more sleep than I need, to be honest, because, yeah. yeah but how, how many hours a night would you say? Um... Nine or ten, and probably I only probably need seven or eight. So yeah. Okay, so. And then on the weekends, longer. Like if I don't have any clients yeah. or anything, um, sometimes after the kids go to school, I, I go back to bed. Yeah. So is that? Which is not normal for me. Yes, it's not normal. So is that um, something that does that kind of bother you, or is it not yeah. a big deal? Yeah. Okay. For sure. So uh, that's another thing we can put, uh, we can look into in the future. Okay. Uh, but I want to kind of just want to check. I mean, I'm sure it's in. all because of the alcohol, you know. Yeah, so yeah. If I, yeah. Feel, so I feel like if I can get my drinking under control, then all the other things will kind of fall into place. Yeah, yeah, and alcohol, you know, sometimes we tell ourselves that uh, alcohol will help us get a better night's sleep, and you know that old saying yeah. of having a nightcap before yeah. you get in the bed. Uh, we've kind of been, you know, trained by, you know, TV and, and movies and stuff yeah. like that, that, you know, you have a drink before bed, it'll help you sleep better. But ultimately, it, you know, it screws with your circadian rhythms yeah. and, and you end up actually having more sleep problems and uh, we'll work on, we'll work on that too. But how, how about your eating? Any troubles there? Eating, nutrition, or diet? No, or I mean, I've always, we, we're really healthy eaters. Um, Mike and I both, it's very important to us to eat healthy. I think that's the one thing I'm doing right, right now is yeah, good. eating good. healthy. Um, yeah. 
we only have you know good healthy stuff for us and the kids in the house no junk food yeah well, i mean good. probably don't eat as much breakfast as normal because i i'm not feeling great but like uh -huh. i'm not skipping i'm just like having a muffin instead of like a muffin and eggs you know yeah so you yeah. you, know, you have some insight with the eating yeah, i don't yeah. eat breakfast either so <laughs> um i just do coffee in the morning yeah. but uh, i but, usually do breakfast and dinner maybe a snack yeah that's I mean, if it's not a, a big deal for you, I don't see a problem mm -hmm. there. So I'm glad you're eating healthy food. And then, you know, if you're not drinking, it gives your your body a chance to absorb all yeah. those nutrients that you're kind of missing out with when you're drinking. So, uh, okay, so there's a couple things I wanted to go over with you. Um, and one of them is called a cognitive triangle. Okay. Um, it's kind of um, some literature I wanted to give you here, but... Um, here is the triangle, and then it just has a bubble here with thoughts, um, behaviors, and emotions. Okay. Um, so, when there's a situation, uh, say you're you're watching Cheaters, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's making you feel kind of triggered. Um, so then it brings you down into the thought bubble here, where um, you know you're. You know, you're having uh, thoughts about Mike getting, mm -hmm. you know, cheating. texts or cheating, yeah. yeah, which ultimately you think he's cheating, which he's, we don't have any evidence that says he does, right? Right. Um, so that, uh, you know, triggers difficult emotions. Um, yeah. And these, yeah. these difficult emotions sometimes can lead to the behavior, so... Yeah, for um, sure. And I'm like, wow, okay. So, so, and then it just goes around and around. Yeah, so they, these can go in any direction, and they... They all affect each other in one way or another. Um, so uh, I just want you to be aware of how um, your thoughts can influence emotions and emotions, behaviors. So this is the drinking, the behaviors. Yeah, this okay. would be the Got drinking. It. You know, this, this is be, the anxiety, this and that's the stupid <laughs> thoughts of him, like thinking exactly. he's a cheater when exactly. he's not. Exactly. So okay. um, this is going to be uh, some literature or some re light reading for you that you okay. can kind of keep with you. I'm okay, going to awesome. put this over here. Um, and then this next thing is a, is a worksheet um, about triggers that I kind of wanted to go over with you. Okay. Um, so um, up in this top section, I'm going to put it over here for you. Um, but this is going to just kind of help us look at different triggers that influence your, your drinking um, and how those triggers actually influence you know, your actions, you know, mm -hmm. your thoughts and actions that uh, we kind of just went over in that triangle. Um, is this something that you think you'd be okay trying yeah. out? Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm just going to stick this here. So do I fill this in? Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over it with you, but I want mm -hmm. you to, you got a pen there. Um, I want you to kind of uh, just, you know, I'll f follow along with you, but um, in this first box here, um, so I, I just want you to... Um, so like worst case scenario. Yeah, so... Okay, Describe so the problem. Yeah. Uh, your triggers are kind of contributing to what is, you know, the worst case scenario. Um, if you were exposed to your trigger, what so is the worst? worst case is like Mike, Mike's cheating on me too, just like my ex-husband did. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that first box, I just want you to put that in the box. So Mike, the worst case scenario would be those thoughts yeah. that you're having that Mike is cheating on you, right? Yeah. Um, and then down in this next thing, um, so just about anything could be a trigger. Yeah. Um, so when we start to explore what, what your triggers could be, um, is there a specific um, emotion uh, that acts as a trigger for you? Um, uh, is there certain people that yeah. you know are triggers for you, places, things? Thoughts, yeah, yeah. Activities. I mean, definitely people like my ex-husband because I still have to deal with him because of the boys. So um, that always gets me. No yeah, when I have to like when we're doing drop off or whatever, and I see him, yeah. like I start to think about it. So that's. Um, that's I think a hard in terms one. of my emotions. Is there any? I, yeah, I mean, I have anxiety. I mean, yeah. I've always kind of had anxiety anyway, but like, then it then it just like gets heightened. Now when it's like, yeah, it just it won't stop. Mm -hmm. um, How about places you go that might trigger you? I can't 
when I think of places, but like um, activities and situations, I would say um, any any show. We just talked about Yeah, whether right? it's that show or a movie or something where a man is like stepping out on his wife, girlfriend, whatever. So um, any show or TV with cheating. And I mean, it's like, I feel like it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> you know? Anything for ratings, but yeah. it affects. Um, thoughts? I mean, like the idea that this marriage, what, the, you know, of, uh, the idea of ever getting divorced again. Mm -hmm. um, sure. That makes sense. Like, scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Um, Places. Would this be maybe when you do the drop off? Is there yeah, a certain place that you guys. Off. Um, I also, so. I know where my ex-husband used to meet up with women. I mean, I found out later. Yeah, um, that gets stirred. And so, like, and I pass it on the way to work. So that was. Yeah. Okay. So, so. <laughs> the bar that he used to go to. Yeah. How about? Have you ever? I know not to get off topic here, but have you ever thought about changing up your route to work? Just yeah. To kinda, yeah. 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 I should. <laughs> I should. I think. I think I have this like stupid idea that like. That would be, if I did that, he would be winning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and so I'm not gonna change my life and go out of my way mm -hmm. for something that he did. That sounds dumb. It's in, like as it's coming out, but yeah. I just, yeah, I don't okay. want him to keep winning. Yeah. But but I'm drinking and I'm like sabotaging my own life, so maybe he is winning. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. So I know, um, you know, a lot of times. The triggers will lead you to drinking. Um, and maybe we can consider looking at some changes to your yeah. to lifestyles or your relationships, your daily routine like that. Oh, you know what? My car, like just being in my car um, on the way home, because that's usually when I start to get. Um, well, that's when you. Being in my car, yeah, on my way home, that's when I start to think. And so maybe if there's something I can do in my car that'll like get me out of that mode. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Have you? just an idea but like um i like to listen to podcasts on my way home and um i i mean i'm open to that i haven't yeah. listened to any but i could i like podcasts yeah there's a lot of they call it um what do they, they call it quit lit right or no yeah like um there's like these there's po podcasts uh about you know sobriety oh. and ways uh they provide like you know uh, coping mechanisms that kind of it, it's more or less a distraction uh, but it also gives you a lot of good information about how alcohol affects your body. Um, there's one called The Naked Mind. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's really good. There's actually a book also. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, it's, I, I have. The Naked Mind. Okay, I'll look it up. Okay. I actually have a co I, I have a copy that oh. I could let you borrow. Okay, awesome. Yeah, um, and it gives you a lot of and good information. Help me, if I can have something to help me in the car ride, because that's that's like my downfall every day. Yeah. Is that car ride home? Yeah, there's a bunch of good podcasts for. Uh, you know, reducing or abstaining from alcohol. And we okay. can, we'll go over some of those awesome. um, before you leave. Um, so that's great. And then one other uh, worksheet I kind of wanted to have you do about triggers here um, that goes in line with that last one. Um, so your three, um, your three biggest triggers, uh, could you kind of just... I'm gonna say car ride, ex-husband, uh -huh. And the TV shows. Okay, so we, we, we did just kind of go over those, but I just want you to put them back one more time here. I'm going to put... Car ride. Uh, yeah, ex-husband. Ex-husband. And then TV. And TV. Perfect. Okay, and this next um, box, is there a strategy that you can use to avoid well, I mean, or reduce? I mean, I really like your idea of podcasts, so I'm going to look that up on the way home. Mm -hmm. uh, oops, can't spell podcasts. Yeah. Um, in terms of my ex-husband, I mean, I, I kind of have to see him. Uh -huh. um, that one might be a little bit hard to avoid. Yeah. If you guys, is it some kind of a, is it a court order? No, 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 it's just when we do the exchange. When oh, we, I you see. Know, yeah. um, although, you know what, I mean, I don't have to open the door. I don't have to be able, I don't have to see him when he picks them up. Um, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, it is. So maybe when he picks them up, I'll just... 
Yeah. Go back into my yeah. bedroom and wait until he's gone. Yeah, they're old enough that yeah. it's not like you have to. And then the tea. So, okay, so. Um, or maybe I'll just have Mike greet him at the door. Well, there um, we go. Have That's Mike a good one. do the Mike, exchange. Yeah. He'd be okay with that. Yeah. Um, at least for a little while. And then, you know, just avoiding the TV shows and movies. <laughs> I mean, I can't avoid. Because, like I said, it's everywhere, but it's specifically the cheaters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So let's see. Yeah, that's good. Do you think? Uh, so I, j I just kind of wanted to to help you, um, you know, kind of have a different way of looking at your um, your triggers and maybe some ways that we can avoid those. Yeah. Because those. I mean, I can't. I definitely can't avoid the car ride. So. Yeah. But like podcasts or or some kind of like. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, right. Motivational person talking to me, and then. I, I know. I know it's hard for you to. You don't want to give in into your, um, into the X about you know changing your your route to work, but maybe trying that. Maybe giving yeah. it a try. Okay. It could help lessen. Yeah. Uh, and and those feelings of wanting to drink when you're on your way home. And then if I do have to see him, I can just keep reminding myself that Mike's not him. Right. You know. Exactly. Mike's not him. Mike's not him. Mike's not him. <laughs> So some some affirmations you can use um, yeah. in the car. So let's see. I think we're just about out of time here. So um, I want to keep. I want to let you. Um, yeah. Let yeah. you bring these home. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. These trigger worksheets we we went over. Oh, so um, sure. yeah. And also this uh, cognitive oh, triangle. Okay. So okay. you can kind of review that, okay. and um, it'll kind of help you. Um, you know, put in the perspective. Yeah, and hopefully. that's book, the naked. What was the it? naked mind. Yeah. Naked mind. Yeah. yeah. No, that sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. to read. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. do you have any? I think I, no. Any other questions before we end today? No, this is good. Thank you. I think I already have an appointment for two oh, weeks one, from now. One other question: Would you be interested in medications at all? Um. Or is you that mean something? like for my anxiety? Yeah. Yeah. For anxiety. I think. While I'm still drinking, no, uh -huh. but if it's still there after, maybe. Okay, and then... Because I had anxiety before the drinking got bad, so maybe, yeah, yeah but I feel like, yeah, I don't want to go down the road of yeah. at throwing out, okay. throwing in more, Yeah. you know, and chemicals. The, there's another medication for that they use for drinking called naltrexone. Would oh. you be interested in talking about that? What does that do? Well, it kind of, uh, re research shows it kind of... Um, reduces your cravings for the alcohol oh. um, so it kind of disrupts yeah. the brain waves and would you be interested in like consulting with a one of our psychiatrists yeah yeah that okay. would be awesome if i i mean like i said i will do anything to stop drinking okay so uh i'll put in uh that consult okay. and uh we'll see you we'll see you back here in two weeks okay great thank cool. you okay, okay. well thanks <laughs>